What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life to the fullest today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Ram 1500 Limited Longhorn. Huge thank you to Bella A over at Coons Tyson's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Ram 1500 Limited Longhorn or any Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram product, I'll be sure to have Bella's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It is a relatively dreary day outside here today, but that is not going to stop me from getting a couple videos filmed. So like usual, first we're going to talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Ram 1500 Limited Longhorn. And this particular one has been painted in the beautiful $245 Delmonico Red Pearl Coat paint. A couple things I wanted to say at the beginning of this video is that for 2024, the Ram 1500 remains relatively unchanged from the 2023 model year. Reason being is that there's going to be a total interior and exterior refresh for the 2025 model year. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the headlights, then I'm going to work my way down and around into the back end of the Ram 1500 Limited Longhorn. So as standard, you do get adaptive LED projector headlights with automatic high beams as well as LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, and LED fog lights integrated nicely into your front bumper. Now taking a step back and to the left, let's take in the front end of the Limited Longhorn. So this front end is basically what makes the Limited Longhorn the Limited Longhorn with that chrome bar style grill with that chrome grill and headlight surround. So you can see that chrome follows all the way to the top and the bottom of your headlights. And then again, obviously on the top and the bottom of your front grill. You can see at the center of your front grill, you have that chrome ram lettering. And then just beneath or integrated, I guess, into your A is where you will find your forward facing camera. So this vehicle has been optioned with the $6,660 Longhorn Level 1 Equipment Group, which gives you this forward facing camera that works with your 360 degree view camera system. And then that also gives you six forward facing sensors as well. Also, as standard with the Limited Longhorn, you get these two body color pieces below your headlights as I'm showing you on screen right now. And then coming down just a little bit, this vehicle has also been optioned with the $295 body color bumper group, which gives you body color front and rear bumpers, obviously. Uh, and then integrated nicely into your front bumper, you get this satin black lower grill as well as two chrome tow hooks, one right there one right there as well and then all the way at the bottom down here you get a satin black front valence which hopes to aid with aerodynamics which hopefully in turn again leads to better fuel economy a couple things that i wanted to say uh, that have to do with the ground clearance so this vehicle has been optioned with the 1995 dollars four corner air suspension setup so basically the normal mode ground clearance is 8.7 inches However, if you put this thing into entry exit mode, it lowers it two inches and then aero mode. So when you're driving down the highway, it lowers it a half inch from normal mode. So you're looking at about, you know, eight inches of ground clearance in normal mode. And then also you get off-road mode one and off-road mode two. So with off-road mode one activated, it raises it one inch from normal mode to 9.7 inches of ground clearance. And then with off-road mode two selected, it raises it two inches from your normal ride height. So you get 10.7 inches of ground clearance. But now working my way down the side, you get these body color wheel arch moldings. Again, this vehicle has been optioned with the $1,995 four corner air suspension setup. So that is what your air suspension setup looks like down in there. Uh, and then a couple things I wanted to mention is that you do get rain sensing wipers as standard with the limited Longhorn as you get these uh, Chrome 1500 Hemi e-torque badges on both sides of your hood. And then coming down just a little bit, this vehicle has also been optioned with the $2,095 22-inch polished with gray accent wheels. These wheels are also wrapped in 285-45 Pirelli Scorpion Verde all-season tires. I'll give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here real quick. The Limited Longhorn does come standard with 20-inch wheels, which I will show you on screen right now. Anyways, Working our way down the side, you get these chrome mirror caps as standard with integrated turn signals. Also as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, power folding. You get auto dimming on your driver's side, and then you also get a puddle light at the bottom of both of your side view mirrors. Again, this vehicle has been optioned with the $6,660 Level 1 Equipment Group, which gives you the blind spot monitoring right here and on the right-hand side of your 
uh, passenger side side view mirror and then that also gives you the 360 degree view camera system and you will find your camera about right there on the bottom of your side view mirror now taking a step back let's do a little side profile view of the limited longhorn there you go you may be able to notice that you do get bright window trim as well as body color door handles with keyless access just keep in mind the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles and then also on your front two doors only is where you will find your chrome ram lettering and then also again this vehicle has been optioned with the longhorn level one equipment group which gives you these power running boards at the bottom of both side doors that's what that looks like right there i'll show you a uh, video of what that looks like when they turn or open up on screen right now and then also part of that level one equipment group you get this led third brake light up top there as well as the rear view camera mirror camera which is located about right there i'll show you what the digital rear view mirror looks like on screen right now and then by the way you also get a satin black shark fin antenna up top there you get a power sliding rear window with a rear window defogger you get a capless filler neck back here that is what it looks like. 87 octane will do you just fine. Again, you get those uh, body color wheel arch moldings back here as well, uh, as uh, do you also get that uh, airbag back there as well that goes a part of your four corner air suspension. Here's a rear three quarter shot of the limited longhorn. And also as standard with the limited longhorn, you get LED taillights. You also do get a backup camera at the center of your tailgate, which is located right there. Another thing you get is an LED tailgate handle, uh, which is basically illuminated in there um, at night. It makes it a little bit easier to grab onto the handle and you can see it's right there. Basically, it's a puddle light for this area to make it a little bit easier, not only to grab onto the handle, but to see what's going on back here at night. And you can see on the left-hand side of your tailgate, you have that uh, brushed aluminum limited longhorn edition plaque, Ram logo at the center, four x four logo in chrome on the lower right-hand side of your tailgate. You do get a dampened tailgate as standard. That's what it looks like when it opens up. So it doesn't just slam down, which is very, very nice. And then uh, one other thing I wanted to say is that this vehicle has also been optioned with the $545 bed utility group, which gives you these four adjustable cargo tie downs, two on that side, two on that side. And it also gives you these rails on both sides, part of that bed utility group. Uh, another thing that comes part of that bed utility group is this deployable bed step right here, which makes it easier to step in and out of the bed. So you can see very, very easy step in the bed makes it very very easy to step in and out and then also part of the level one equipment group you get a spray in bed liner as well as led cargo lighting so you get a cargo light right there led cargo light over there as well as the button to turn the cargo lights on or off and then you also get the uh, led third brake light up top there with the led cargo lighting integrated into that third brake light you also get four tie down hooks back here one two three four so you get one in each corner uh, and that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the bed area again that step makes it a lot easier to step in and out definitely recommend the bed utility group and then also the dampened tailgate also makes it very easy to close the tailgate because it is a very very light tailgate so it's very easy to open and close definitely like that uh, a couple other things I wanted to mention while we were back here uh, is that this also, again, has been optioned with the $295 body color bumper group, which gives you this body color rear bumper. Um, as standard, you do get the dual exhaust setup. And then also, again, with the Longhorn Level 1 equipment group, you get six parking sensors back here. Um, a couple other options that this vehicle has. This vehicle has been loaded up, so bear with me. This has the $195 392 rear axle ratio, as well as the $495 anti-spin rear differential. And last but not least, the max payload capacity of this particular vehicle is 1,337 pounds. And the max tow capacity of this particular vehicle is 10,110 pounds. Very capable vehicle. I love Delmonico Red on the Limited Longhorn. I think it matches very nicely to the interior that is specific also to the Limited Longhorn. And I'm definitely a fan of this generation Ram 1500. I love the way it looks. I don't care if it's a Limited, Limited Longhorn or the Limited Night Edition. I love all of them. I do also like the Laramies and stuff, but I really like the specific front end that you get with the Limited trim levels. Again, that's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But with all that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. 
Popping open that hood reveals the optional $3,045 5.7 liter Hemi E-Torque V8 that makes 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 6.4 seconds. If you are wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 18 miles per gallon in the city, 22 miles per gallon on the highway for 19 miles per gallon combined with four wheel drive. Now, considering that this is, you know, the limited Longhorn, I think this should absolutely come standard with the 5.7 liter V8. The fact that it doesn't is mind boggling to me. And the fact that it comes standard with the 3.6 liter V6 is just, I cannot wrap my head around that. But anyways, if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. I put a lot of time and a lot of effort into making these videos um, and I would really appreciate it. If you guys would just take one second, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section down below so the YouTube algorithm likes my channel. I would really appreciate it again from the bottom of my heart. But with that stuff out of the way, Let's move into the interior. Video, like I said earlier, you do get keyless access. All you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can also lock the vehicle by pressing on that button right there. Now the vehicle is locked, but again, put your hand behind the door handle, the vehicle will unlock again. You do get a Longhorn specific key fob, so that is what it looks like. You get those like bronze-ish accent colors on the outsides of the key fob. And then you do get a couple cool functions on the key fob. So when you press this button twice, it's going to put you into entry exit mode, basically gonna drop the air suspension. Take a listen. You can hear it and you can also see it dropping. That just makes it a little bit easier for your grandma or somebody who you know, is handicapped to step in and out of the vehicle. Again, makes it very easy because it lowers it down. And then uh, you can also drop the tailgate by pressing on that button right there. And you can remote start the vehicle by pressing that button twice. So we might as well remote start the vehicle, but you can see how much lower it got to step in and out. And then with the running boards down, makes it very, very easy. And probably, you know, probably only like a four or a five inch step up from the ground. Again, making it very, very easy to step in and out of the vehicle. I absolutely love that the Ram does that, but let's take a listen to the vehicle with the remote start system. The 5.7 liter sounds amazing on a cold start, but it is warm, uh, but it still sounds really dang good. And I am definitely going to miss the Hemi V8. So you can see with the limited Longhorn, you do get this black slash new saddle interior, which again is exclusive to the limited Longhorn. And I think it looks absolutely phenomenal, especially when matched to this Delmonico red paint. But taking a look at our driver's side door panel at the top, you get black leather with that new saddle accent colored stitching. You get some of that new saddle accent colored leather. You get some wood grain trim, some black leather, that bronzish accent color trim, bronzish accent color door handle, two memory seat adjustment settings. With the level one equipment group, you do get a 19 speaker Harman Kardon sound system as well as these power running boards. Harman Kardon sound system sounds absolutely phenomenal. As standard, power folding side view mirrors, they fold in and out. And then here are your side view mirror controls. I think I pointed this out, I'm gonna point it out again, but you get two memory seat adjustment settings for your driver, automatic up and down windows for the front. You do not get automatic up or down windows in the back. That is gonna restrict your passenger window privileges. You have your unlock and your lock functions, a nicely padded and leather wrapped armrest with some accent colored stitching, very good amount of miscellaneous storage space down here, as well as two cup holders and a spot you could set your phone right there. Taking a look at what the interior looks like again, interior is specific to the limited longhorn and again i think it looks awesome matched to this paint but you do get power front seats that's what they look like and then one thing i really like about rams is that their headrests are also adjustable so you can bring them forwards and backwards until you find your comfortable position you get this limited longhorn thing right there on the seat back of both of your front seats heated and ventilated front seats with this vehicle that's what they look like you get a ram door sill that is brushed aluminum not coming the best, uh, coming up the best on camera. But anyways, stepping on into the interior with the entry exit mode, which it lets you know what mode it is in right there, makes it very, very easy to step in and out of the vehicle. One time we had a Ram loaner car uh, with the Takata airbag situation with the Honda Ridgeline. 
Anyways, they gave us a Ram 1500 as a loaner and my grandma could not get into it because it was too high off the ground. Uh, and that is why entry exit mode is actually a very, very useful feature. If you, the driver are handicapped or you know your passenger is like your grandma or your older wife, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to step in and out of the vehicle for them. But coming down here, you have your headlight controls, headlights off, headlights on the automatic position, headlights on and daytime running lights on. That is for your fog lights. And then that is for your LED cargo lights. Coming down just a little bit, you have your electronic parking brake down here, pull up to engage it. And if you wanted to disengage it, you have to push your foot on the brake and then push against that and then that will disengage. And then pressing on this is going to push the pedals away from you. And then pressing on this button right here is going to bring the pedals closer to you. Very, very nice. Um, and then this is basically to adjust the brightness of your ambient lighting uh, as well as your dome lights. And then this is going to adjust the brightness of your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. Flipping this down gives you access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So you can bring the steering wheel towards you. You can push the steering wheel away from you. And then you can also bring the steering wheel up and down until you find your comfortable position. With this being the limited Longhorn, I would have liked to see a power adjustable steering rack, but it is what it is. Now let's take a listen to our turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like on the Ram 1500 Limited. You get a leather wrapped steering wheel that is also heated and you get some accent colored stitching on the inside of the steering wheel. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to it. That is what the horn sounds like on the Ram 1500. One thing I wanted to point out before we continued on is that on the back side of the left hand side of the steering wheel, you have your tuning controls. And then on the back side of the right hand side of the steering wheel, you have your volume controls. So that is what that looks like right there. Um, and then new for 2023, which was last year's model, you now get a 12 inch configurable digital gauge cluster. I'll walk you through that here in a second. But anyways, all of these arrows and that okay button are to control that screen. This is to pick up on a phone call. This is to hang up on a phone call. And then that button right there is also to control that screen as well. Coming over to here, this is to downshift and or upshift on your transmission. And then with the level one equipment group, you get adaptive cruise control with stop and go. So here are your adaptive cruise control settings. And with all that stuff out of the way, we're gonna jump into our digital gauge cluster. So again, this is new for last year's model for 2023. It's the 12 inch digital gauge cluster. Um, right now, this is one of the screens basically displaying the tachometer, the speedometer, digital speedometer readout at the center. I love the Longhorn font that displays up top there. That's your compass. That's the ambient exterior temperature. Then you have your coolant temperature stuff down here, transmission status stuff, letting me know what my lights are on. Uh, basically my parking lights are on at the moment. And then down here, you got your odometer, letting us know uh, what mode the air suspension is in, which right now it's in entry exit mode. Again, the air suspension does not come standard with the limited Longhorn. It is a $1,995 option. And then down on the lower right-hand side of your digital gauge cluster, you have your uh, fuel gauge and your fuel range stuff. But anyways, continuing from there, again, and to control this screen, you have these arrows and also this button right here. So we might as well start with this button. Basically, here are your different shortcut things that you can set to your liking. You get your navigation stuff, average fuel economy stuff, uh, radio stuff, driver assistance stuff, and then that is your tire pressure stuff. Let's say I wanted to change the tire pressure stuff. I click two to the right and then I can change it to the average fuel economy stuff the air suspension mode, um, coolant temperature stuff, transmission fluid temperature stuff, oil temperature, uh, oil pressure, battery voltage, um, that kind of thing. And yeah, you guys kind of get the message of what you can do. However, these two, this one and this one, you cannot change. Uh, but this one you can change and this one you can change. So again, you can go throughout these different things and it changes depending on which tile that you select. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that's kind of about it for that. Coming back over to here, I wanna go back out of this. So all I gotta do is click that button again and it's gonna bring me back into this screen. If I click over to the right, uh, this is your digital screen for your um, digital gauge cluster. So you have two different themes. It can either be in analog or it can be in digital, whichever one you like. This one reminds me of the TRX, but anyways, clicking down one, then you got your uh, driver assist information stuff. Click down one more, you have a uh, vehicle info screen. So. This is one of your vehicle info screen. You get your range, average fuel economy. Clicking over to the right, you have the different temperatures and voltage, some more temperatures, oil life and pressures, tire pressure stuff, uh, seat belt stuff, air suspension stuff. You get your engine hours, and then back to your fuel economy. 
Clicking down one, you get your trip information, trip A and trip B. Then you get your navigation stuff. Then you have your audio stuff. You get some stored messages. Right now we don't have any messages. Um, and then you can, uh, in your eight screen, which is your setting screen, you can click over to the left and then that's gonna bring you into your head-up display settings. The head-up display also comes a part of the Longhorn Level 1 Equipment Group. So if we click into this, you can adjust the brightness, you can turn it on or off, and then you can also adjust uh, the contents that you see on it as well. You can adjust the height of it, so on and so forth. Those are all your different head-up display settings. Uh, but anyways, back out of that, click down one more time. That brings you back into this screen. And either this screen or the digital screen Screen, uh, are one of the screens that I would personally leave my digital gauge cluster on. Personal preference, do whatever you want. Leather wrapping up top here, accent colored stitching. Your head up display is up top here right now. It's displaying the speed limit sign as well as the digital speedometer readout. You probably can't see it uh, on screen right now, but anyways, head up display is displaying right here. Very, very nice. Again, with the Lair Longhorn Level 1 Equipment Group, you get the Harman Kardon sound system, so you get a speaker up top there. Uh, also, up top here, you get storage space. You get a 12-volt power outlet. You can connect your radar detector and mount right there if you wanted to. Then, uh, also with the Limited Longhorn, you get that wood grain trim. So that wood grain trim also goes throughout your dash, as you can see, up top here as well. Push button, start button. This is your transmission dial. One thing that's kind of funny is earlier in the video, I uh, actually turned the radio down when I was trying to go into park. However, let's say you're going 80 miles an hour down the highway and you want to yell at your kids, you want to turn the radio all the way down, but you accidentally put the transmission into park. It's not actually going to let you put it into park if you're going 80 miles an hour or even five miles an hour. Um, maybe five miles an hour, but not 80 miles an hour. Uh, it's dummy proof. So it's not going to let you mess up your transmission. And then you have your uh, <clears throat> transfer case stuff here. Four wheel drive automatic, four wheel high and four wheel low. You do get a two speed transfer case. And if you press right there, let's say you want a flat toe behind your RV, uh, that will put you into true neutral. And then that is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. Coming over here, you have your lane keeping stuff and your uh, parking assist stuff. Both of these buttons come a part of the Longhorn Level 1 Equipment Group for $6,660. Then that is your uh, hazard button. Zooming out, this is new for 2023. Again, this is a 2024 model year truck, but this is the Uconnect 5 infotainment system. It is a 12 inch system and it does have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto connectivity, as well as built in navigation. On the left hand side, you have your controls for your temperature, your mode for the air, uh, directing the air, fan speed controls, uh, climate control system automatic, volume knob, mute knob, tuning knob, screen off button, and then you have all these different controls for the temperature, front defroster, rear defroster, to turn your AC on or off and or to recirculate the air. Click that button one more time and the screen turns back on. At the bottom of the screen, you have all your different shortcut buttons. So you get your home, media, comfort, navigation, phone, vehicle, and your apps. If you wanted to turn your heated or ventilated seats on, or if you wanted to turn your heated steering wheel on, you have this button up top here. Get your heated seat button, ventilated seat button, heated steering wheel button, heated seat and ventilated seat both get three levels of adjustability i would have liked to see a physical button to turn your heated seats on or your heated uh or your ventilated seats on but anyways you basically just got to go throughout that screen there then you get your time your temperature um this is what the home screen looks like you get your media screen comfort screen this is what your climate control system looks like i'll turn it on that is what it looks like when it is on and then i'm going to turn that back off because why not heated ventilated seats heated steering wheel Coming over here, you get your navigation screen. I don't wanna show you that. And then you got your phone stuff, your vehicle stuff. So you have your uh, surround camera that you can pop up immediately if you wanted to. I do wish the camera screen took up the entire screen, but really not that big of a deal, but it is kind of small. Uh, and then you have all your different camera views here, like here and here as well. Xing back out of that, you have all your different controls here. Um, and then you have your different settings. You have a ton of different setting screens. Look throughout there. That's the second one, that's the third one, and then that is it for that. And then you can go between your different apps, and then you get all of your apps here. Comfort, nav, phone, clicking down. Um, I guess that's it. And then you get your vehicle, system, so on and so forth. I don't wanna to spend too much time on this screen. This is for your air suspension control, so you can raise it up. You can lower it by pushing up, raise, push down, lower. Traction control on or off, tow haul mode, and then this is to turn your parking sensors both front and rear on or off. 
spot you can set a phone. You get two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, an auxiliary jack, and then also a part of that level one equipment group, you get a wireless charging pad. Your wireless charging pad is right there. Uh, and then you also get a spot you can set a phone. And then down in here, you get a 115 volt or a 400 watt household power outlet, which that's what it looks like there. Tons of storage space down in here. Sliding this forwards, you get two cup holders, um, some storage space, spot you could set some coins. You can also close that off if you wanted to as well. You get some wood grain trim, um, and that's more of that bronze accent colored stitching. You can close this totally off, and now it's just very nice looking. Opening that back up, you get a limited Longhorn Edition plaque right here that probably looks like it would get pretty darn hot in the summer like they do on the TRXs. Um, all of this leather wrapped. You get some miscellaneous storage space in there. Not all that much space. You can maybe set a clipboard in there if you're lucky. And then opening this up, you get a USB-A port here as well as a very good amount of storage space. And then if you open this up all the way, you get all of these things that I would never use, but if you're a contractor, you may use, probably not though. Um, and then a good amount of storage space down in here as well. Um, you can flip that up and now it's divided from this storage area. Otherwise, if that's flipped down, I can reach my hand all the way through as you can see. Um, but yeah, very, very good amount of storage space down in there. Closing that back up, nicely padded armrest. Two cup holders back here. You can set your phone horizontally here if you wanted to. Then you get a upper glove box with the wood trim that says limited Longhorn edition. Flipping that open, good amount of storage space in there. I'd say you could probably fit 12 plus sausage McMuffins in there. Closing that back up. Lower glove box is lockable. Opening up your lockable glove box. It's rather small for a truck, but the reason it's small is because you have that upper glove box up top there. Um, and then seat on the side looks pretty much the exact same. However, you do get a leather care guide over there, which is also very nice. One thing I love about Rams is that they also put some leather wrapping around your Opu panels. So you get an Opu panel on the driver's side, Opu panel on the passenger side. Also with the Longhorn Level 1 Equipment Group, you get this digital rear view mirror. However, let's say you don't like the digital rear view mirror, you just want an auto dimming rear view mirror, but you really like the spec on this truck, all you have to do is flip that forward and now it's just gonna behave like a regular auto dimming rear view mirror. However, personally for me, I like the digital rear view mirror. I think it's nice because it gets rid of your uh, blind spots. And then also you can adjust what you see. So you can adjust the brightness up or down. You can also adjust the orientation down or up depending on what you want. Uh, and then, yeah, that's about it for those two things right there. Coming up a little bit. You got a sunglass spot right here. This vehicle has also been optioned with the $1,595 panoramic roof. So this control here, this control here, and this control here are all for your panoramic roof. This is for the shade. This is to tilt the roof, and then that is to slide the roof back. I'm not gonna open the roof because it was raining, but anyways, it is a dual pane panoramic roof. I love that, very, very nice. Uh, and then this is for your power sliding rear window. Get your SOS and your assist stuff here. Driver gets a light, passenger gets a light, both are LED. That's to drop the tailgate. Uh, and then this is to turn on all the interior dome lights. And then that is basically whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the doors. Universal garage door opener. If you own a house with three different garage bays, you can open up those garage bays individually. Opening this up, you get a spot you could set any paper product. Then you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. I would have liked to see the vanity lights be LED, but they're not. And then this slides forwards and backwards, dependent on where the sun is shining. And really, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the front. These seats are very, very comfortable. I love the way that the Ram interior looks, especially with this limited Longhorn interior. It looks very, very nice, very, very upscale. Um, and I think I like it better than the King Ranch F-150s. Not 100% sure on that, um, but it is a very, very premium feeling interior, looking interior, um, and I'm, Excited to see what the 2025 Ram 1500 interior looks like because how much better can it get than you know this interior here? I would like to see massage seats on the 2025 Ram 1500 Limiteds. Ram, if anybody's watching, add the massaging seats. Um, but now I'm just gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at whatever uh, optional stuff you wanna take a look at. Take a look at all the standard stuff. Take a look at the fuel economy stuff, the warranty stuff. Basically, I am just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Ram 1500 Limited Longhorn is spec is $82,905. So definitely expensive for sure, 
but it is a really, really nice truck on the outside and on the inside. And this one, pretty much fully loaded. I do want to show you, though, what we got going on in the second row seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. Again, entry exit mode makes it very easy to step in and out of the vehicle. This is what your rear door panel looks like. Again, you do not get automatic up or down windows in the back, but I do believe these windows go all the way down. Get a spot you can set a phone, speaker surround, good amount of storage space down in there. I'm going to move my backpack over to the other side because I did want to show you that you do get a Ram box right here. Um, and then you also get a Ram box on the other side as well. <coughs> Excuse me, another one over there. This is what your rear seats look like. You get that same thing uh, on these seat backs here as well. You can fold these seats up. You get flat storage space. So if you want to put your dog back here, your dog's still going to be comfortable. And then you can also uh, drop these seats as well. I do believe these seats also do recline. So let me do that here real quick. I uh, love that about the Rams is the second row seats recline. Look at that. Awesome. I don't know if any other uh, truck does that. I've never seen that in any other 1500 level truck, but this makes it very, very comfortable back here. And I could honestly do a road trip from here to Miami with these reclined seats, no problem. Uh, up top here, you get a dome light and a spot you can set your dry cleaning. You get another Opu panel back here. This is what you get with the Longhorn. You get this fancy looking buckle for your seat back pocket. Um, and then you get a seat back pocket again behind the driver's seat and behind the passenger seat, you get that fancy buckle over there. Two cup holders, two HVAC vents, two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, heated and ventilated second row seat, which is awesome. Uh, and then you also get a 115 volt or a 400 watt household power outlet back here as well. Um, and then moving over to here, one thing I really like is that you actually get a very nice looking center seat when this is up. But if you want a armrest, you fold the entire seat down, then you get two cup holders, you get a nicely padded center armrest right here. Very, very nice. Nothing like you see in a Ford or a Chevy or a GMC. And then if you open this up, you get some storage space down in there. You can see I'm adjusted behind myself. I'm five foot nine, plenty of leg room, plenty of knee room, even when these seats are reclined. However, if I bring them back to the normal position, still plenty of leg room, plenty of knee room and plenty of headroom left over as well. Uh, not even a problem for me being five foot nine. This is what the view is from my eye level out the front. But we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Limited Longhorn. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, so I am parked, but I did wanna demonstrate right now, I have the vehicle in entry exit mode, but as soon as you get over about five miles an hour, uh, it will begin to raise up and go back into its normal ride height mode and you will kind of feel it uh, as it goes up into its you know normal mode. Um, and you can see right now, you can see it's raising up. And like I said, you can kind of feel it if you're really trying to, um, but other than that, you know, you can't really feel it. But if you're paying attention, um, you may think you can feel it, but whether you can feel it or not, I don't know, it's totally up to you. Uh, I don't know if I could really feel it, especially right there. But uh, now that it is higher, you can kind of tell that it is a little bit higher. But man, I love the way that this thing looks or drives, excuse me, take a listen to how it sounds. Eight speed automatic is absolutely awesome. I love this transmission. And you know, I've done videos now with pretty much all the half ton trucks. Um, and I gotta say, I definitely like the eight speed that is found in the Rams the best. Uh, I think the 10 speeds are a little bit too jumpy and they're just, they're not 100% seamless where in my opinion, I do believe that the, uh, the Rams transmission is seamless. The eight speed is just really, really good in my personal opinion and from everything that I've experienced with it. Um, and the 10 speeds are just not totally there. There's still a good transmission, but uh, I think when it comes down to it, I think the transmission in the Rams is just the best. Again, that's my personal opinion, something that I've experienced. Um, and then another thing I wanted to say is that, you know, I personally love a V8. And uh, if you want your V8, your 5.7 to be a little bit more quick, um, then I definitely suggest you get the 392 axle and then also the anti-spin axle. Uh, reason being is it's going to make it quicker, it's going to tow better, um, and it might not cruise as well at higher speeds, but 
I will definitely take that trade over, you know, having a lower axle ratio because it makes it just a little bit more sluggish. This thing definitely with the 392 wakes up the, uh, the 392 axle ratio, not the 392 engine. This, there's no 6.4 option in this. But anyways, watch the acceleration. And I'd say that was about 25% throttle, maybe. Um, so, I mean, yeah, this thing definitely, it cruises very, very well at speed. And uh, like I was saying with the 392 axle ratio, I think it's totally fine to get the 392 axle ratio, even if you're gonna be driving this on the highway. The reason being uh, is with the eight speed automatic transmission, it pretty much keeps it at a pretty darn low RPM, uh, even at, you know, higher speeds. But here's a nice little acceleration, 70%. You see, because the roads are wet, it was wanting to spin. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it just, it cruises very, very well. Um, it does a very good job at getting up to speed. It goes over bumps very, very well. The uh, four corner air suspension is worth every penny in my personal opinion. Let's test the body roll. Definitely a decent bit of body roll with uh, the four corner air suspension setup, but um, yeah, if you want something that handles really well, you might want to look into getting a Chevy um, because Chevys and GMCs seem to have the best handling suspension. Um, and they're also pretty comfortable as well. But if you want the most comfortable suspension, um, then you're going to probably want to look into getting an F-150. But I would say that the suspension in this is also very, very comfortable. Uh, I noticed like all my buddies, dads, like 2018 Ram 1500 Limited, um, it's definitely more bouncy than this. I think they've ironed out the kinks from 2018 to 2024 with their air suspension setup because this thing actually handles very, very well. It goes over bumps well. And there's not just like a ton of body roll when you hit bumps and stuff which is also very very nice um that noise is starting to bother me so i'm going to try to grab that piece and pull it off because uh that was kind of annoying but we're going to get out onto this road up top here we're going to do a nice little acceleration again uh, i really like the new digital gauge cluster and i actually think i like this screen better than the analog screen and i think the reason for that is you know if it's a digital screen you might as well just use the digital theme on the digital screen. I guess, uh, you know, that's just the way that I look at it. Uh, but I also do like the analog screen and I really like up top there on the top of the screen where it says Longhorn. I think that looks pretty sweet um, and it just feels, you know, a little bit special. There's a Ram TRX over there. Love myself a Ram TRX. And at my last job that I had, uh, I had a Ram TRX as a work truck, actually in white on fuel rebel wheels that were the bronze color. Here's an acceleration. very good acceleration uh, I don't want to get on it too much because it does start to spin because it is wet outside uh, but back to what I was saying had a Ram TRX at my last job man that was an awesome awesome truck uh, I'd love to own a TRX again one day um, but they're just uh, very very expensive and if you don't want a TRX uh, then this is a great alternative to that because it still sounds great it's still plenty powerful, but it definitely cruises better than the TRX on the open road and stuff. You know, the TRX, off-road oriented truck. So it is a little bit more, you know, jolty um, than this. You know, this is literally made to cruise. It's a, you know, a cruiser rather than an off-roader, which you can definitely feel, you know, cruising down this freshly paved pavement. It feels awesome. It's super, super smooth. Um, it definitely does not feel like a truck uh, on this new, pavement um, however when you go over a couple bumps that are a little bit awkward you can definitely tell uh, that this is a truck but you know that's just the way that it is with all trucks whether it be an f-150 whether it be a silverado they're going to behave like a truck however with the air suspension it handles you know just cruising down the highway very very nicely and it feels like i'm driving a cadillac at the moment um, low end torque is great you know just barely hitting that throttle starting to accelerate a little bit oh we definitely don't want to go into that lane right now but uh, yeah before we end out today's video i am going to do a nice little highway on ramp acceleration um, and once you get to about 50 miles of fuel range you do get that little light right there that pops up over there as well but uh now we're going to do a nice little acceleration onto the highway 
and uh, we're gonna see how she does. So basically, straighten out here and I'm gonna floor it. Very good acceleration. I put it in four wheel drive automatic for that acceleration. Um, and there was an immense difference in traction with the four wheel drive automatic versus it being in two wheel drive. Um, I personally, you know, if this was my truck here, before I say what I'm gonna say, take a listen to what it sounds like at 70 miles an hour. And also look, it lowered about half inch. This thing cruises very, very well at that speed. Very, very comfortable ride. Um, I really, 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 really like this truck. Um, it just, it cruises so well. Sound system is phenomenal with the Harman Kardon sound system. It's one of the best sound systems that I've heard in a truck. And honestly, I, it might have topped the Bose sound system uh, in the Denali Ultimate that I did a video with. I mean, it's just got great bass. It's got great clarity. Definitely a fan of the Harman Kardon sound system. But uh, back to what I was saying, uh, I would recommend leaving this in two-wheel drive at all times just so you don't burn up your transfer case. Uh, I know four-wheel drive automatic, it's made to do its own thing. But I have heard people say with uh, the four-wheel drive automatic system, there's been a couple issues, not many, but you know, might as well just leave it in two wheel drive uh, unless you're gonna do you know a nice little acceleration like I did or if you're cruising in the snow or rain and stuff like that. But really, overall, very nice truck. I love the specific interior to the limited Longhorn. Very, very nice. Um, and the way that this one is spec is also just, you know, max spec really at the end of the day. But if you're interested in this particular one, I'll be sure to have Bella's information in the description box down below. But that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. So if you enjoyed this review, let me know in the comments down below if you liked it. Let me know what you would change about my style of review. But again, also please hit that subscribe button, but that's it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.